In this webcast, we're going to take a look at four common examples of nucleophiles that can add into the carbonyl group to form alcohols. The first example, shown here, is that of the Grignard reagent. Recall that Grignard reagents feature a carbon-magnesium single bond, and that this covalent bond is highly polarized, so that we can treat Grignard reagents essentially as carb anions. Being anionic on carbon, these nucleophiles can easily add into carbonyl groups to form new carbon-carbon bonds adjacent to alcohols. An example of the addition of a Grignard reagent to a carbonyl compound is shown here. In this example, formaldehyde, CH2O, is treated with ethyl Grignard. The product that results after treatment with acid is a primary alcohol in which the carbonyl carbon has become the primary alcohol carbon in the product. Here we see the intermediate that results after attack of the Grignard reagent on formaldehyde. Notice that the MgBr counter ion is now associated with the oxygen atom of the alkoxide and that a new carbon-carbon bond has formed between the former carbonyl carbon and the former nucleophilic or anionic carbon. Acetylide anions are also great carbon nucleophiles and can form propargylic alcohols upon addition to carbonyl groups. You'll recall from our discussion of hybridization that the CH bond of a terminal acetylene, such as the one shown here, is considerably more acidic than CH bonds built from sp2 or sp3 orbitals. The reason for this is because the lone pair of the conjugate base is in a relatively stable sp orbital. Although these are relatively stable anions relative to those of sp2 and sp3 hybridized carbons, they're still quite reactive and can add into carbonyl groups in an addition type process to generate alcohols such as the one shown here. Reduction is one of our fundamental reaction types and is essentially the formation of carbon-hydrogen bonds from multiple bonds. Reducing the carbonyl group is possible using lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride, the reagents shown here. Although these reagents may look a little complicated and exotic to you now, really all you need to think about when looking at these reagents is the hydride anion H-. We can treat each of these essentially as a source of H-, which can then add in as a nucleophile to the carbonyl group. And so here we see an example using sodium borohydride in which the negative borohydride anion is really just a source of H-, which adds into the carbonyl group to form an alkoxide. After treatment with water to neutralize the alkoxide, the product that results is an alcohol in which we've added a hydrogen to the former carbonyl carbon. Formally, this is a reduction transformation because we've transformed the carbon-oxygen multiple bond into two sigma bonds to hydrogens. Finally, we'll take a more detailed look at the addition of cyanide anion to a carbonyl compound to form cyanohydrins. As you see in the yellow box here, for most ketones and for all aldehydes, the position of the equilibrium favors the cyanohydrin, and I would ask you to pause the video now and think about why that might be the case for aldehydes and sterically unhindered ketones. Mechanistically, this reaction proceeds in a very similar fashion to the addition reactions we've already seen. In the first step, the nucleophilic cyanide anion adds into the carbonyl group to generate an alkoxide. HCN, which is a weak acid, donates its proton to the alkoxide to generate the neutral cyanohydrin product. You can see demos of all four of these reactions happening in real time at the ChemTube 3D website listed here.